currently has already been taken care of on the back end, which means any pricing you're getting today should already have these impacts and so not to worry um, on that then. But they announced and said, we're gonna be making changes to different parameters and adjustments to how interest rates are given based on the client's specific parameters, which we're gonna go over. So when we look at this information here, what we wanna be looking at is, um, you know, looking at how those lender price adjustments are made. And what does that mean? Well, that just means that you're looking at loan level price adjustments. That's LLPA means that different loan levels have price adjustments. And they're imposed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are the agencies pretty much for most conventional financing that you're gonna be using. And those loan features that we're gonna be looking at is you know, credit score, loan to value, the occupancy, meaning is it a primary residence or not? Um, debt to income ratio is a big change on this one. And so really what it means is that there's gonna be changes to, depending on those parameters that we're gonna look at. So there's a couple of big things to point out. Um, the first one is that the penalty for credit scores under 680 is now smaller than they were before. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty big change, which we're gonna look at the grid. What I want you to understand though, is this does not take into account or this is not imposed on FHA financing. Nine times out of 10, if you have a credit score under 680, you're most likely going to be going with FHA financing, which does not have this impact. So although you could see there's gonna be big changes, meaning that you're gonna get better pricing if you have lower credit score, which is what a lot of people are frustrated about because they say, why are the people with lower credit scores um, be, being given better pricing? It's really not because like I said, most of those people under 680 are gonna go FHA anyhow. So although you're gonna see it on the grid that it is gonna be an improvement, the likelihood that there's gonna be people being able to take advantage of it probably is pretty small or smaller than you think that it would be. Now you're gonna also notice loan to value, which means the more money you put down, the better the pricing is gonna be. We're gonna look at that model. So if you have a low credit score, maybe we'd go conventional, but you really don't have that many pricing adjustments at that price point anyhow. So don't think that low credit score necessarily is getting a better uh, adjustment. It may be true in small cases, but for the majority, most people under 680 are gonna be looking at FHA financing anyhow. The other impact is that we're gonna see on the grid here in a minute, that people that did have a higher credit score, they did make adjustments to the LLPA where you're gonna be paying a little bit more. Now it would look at the bright side or the broad side of it and say, okay, why are we being penalized because we have credit scores? When in reality, it's just a lender price adjustment that they've been making overall, um, even though it seems that way. Because again, most of the people under 680 where they're showing the improvement, uh, are going to go FHA. So it's not going to impact them because FHA is most likely still going to be better. Um, so, and we can't usually get a system approval if their credit score is lower. So we usually have to go FHA anyhow. So those are things to keep in mind. There are some waivers, which means that if you're a first time home buyer and your medium income is lower, so depending on your income bracket, you may not have any negative adjustments. Um, and then if you are eligible for a special program uh, like Home Ready and Home Possible, which is lower income as well, Again, these adjustments really aren't going to be applicable to you, which is great. But just to put it in perspective, I want to show, you know, a lot of people think this is just right now that they're just making adjustments to LOPAs. They've been making adjustments to LOPAs. Last year, they made LOPA adjustments where it was more expensive to take cash out of your home. It was more expensive if you had a higher loan amount. And then it was a lot more expensive if you had a second home than it was before. So we've been having adjustments to LOPAs. It's just the news decided to go ahead and release a lot of information on this and again, paint it in a, a negative light uh, for people that have good credit scores, which um, is not necessarily the case. So here's what it looks like. This is from the actual um, memo that came out as far as, or the actual LOPAs. So this is kind of what we're structuring off. So how interest rates work on a overall uh, view of it is that Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they say, okay, here's the loan price adjustment, meaning that there's all these parameters that make up your credit score. And depending on where you fit in these parameters, here's your interest rates. So it's not really the lender setting those rates at this level. It's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac saying, okay, how much of a risk are you is typically what they're looking at. And then those adjustments are applied and that's what makes up your, what we call your rate scorecard, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. So what does that all mean? I know it can be confusing. This is what we're looking at when it comes to pricing and all of your factors. So what you're seeing here is they're saying, okay, this is the new new grid. So they're saying purchase money loans by credit score and LTV. So that means if you have a 780 credit score and you're putting at least 25% down, you have no adjustments. 
meaning that there is nothing negative to, you don't have to have any negative adjustments to your par rate, if you will, we'll call it that. And then if you have less than that, you could see it start costing you um, or it has adjustments to, to those, different, um, those different amounts. Now, if you see here, if you go down to 639, then you can see the adjustments here. And as you can see, you have you know, higher adjustments, meaning that it's gonna cost you more if you have a low credit score and you're putting less money down because it's a higher risk, right? So it makes sense as far as cost goes. And then you have here your, uh, your uh, LLPAs by loan attribute. So these are additional attributes outside of credit score and loan to value. If it's an adjustable rate mortgage, if it's a condo, if it's an investment property, you could see huge adjustments if it's an investment property, which means higher rate of cost. And then manufactured homes also has an adjustment and so all of these factors, if your, your debt to income ratio is over 40, that's the newer one, you're gonna have a negative adjustment as well. So all of these factors make up your credit score. But what I want you to really look at, because that kind of means nothing if you don't follow these, is what are the differences? How can I tell what, what does this all mean for the new changes? The green and yellow mean that things are more affordable, meaning that the cost for that adjustment is less. And then orange and red means it became more expensive. So you can see on this grid, what that even means based on these different loan to values. This is where the, the talk around if you have a lower credit score is better. See all this green, you'll notice that a lot of it is lower credit scores that got better. But again, most of these people that are in this bracket are most likely gonna go FHA unless they're putting more than 20% down. Um, they're gonna be going FHA and it's really not a, pr a price improvement. So this is not gonna be as likely um, as most people that are going to go that direction. And then you can see here the orange and red, which became more expensive. And you can see really that's getting into the, you know, putting less money down. So if you're somebody that has, you know, a higher credit score and you're putting 20% down, you're really not going to see a lot of negative impact. It's for people that um, have the higher credit scores that are putting less money down that we might start seeing that impact. And you might ask, okay, well, well can I go FHA? If you're putting 20% down, it still is going to make sense for you to go conventional financing, most likely, because with FHA, there's an upfront mortgage insurance premium, as well as a monthly mortgage insurance premium, even if you're putting that 20% down. So those are the adjustments that you could see here as far as where those impacts are. And then this is what's called a rate card or a scorecard, because I think it'll be easier to understand what does that even mean? Okay, I understand it's going to be more expensive or less expensive. What, what does that mean for my rate? We take all of these adjustments here and we come up with what's called your rate card, which means based on all those adjustments, you can either take a higher or lower rate, which has the cost included into it after all of the adjustments. So you could see here, if we went with on this specific scorecard, a 4.99 after all those adjustments, it would cost you six points, which is 6% of the loan amount to get that rate, which is 27,000. Or you can go with, let's say a 6.99% rate, and then you can get a credit towards your closing cost of 3000 So it's not really a blanket. It's going to cost you more money-wise or cost you more rate-wise. It's a combination because it's overall cost that's increasing or decreasing. So you get to decide. So what that means is that either you're going to have a higher rate, higher cost, or a combination of both. So I think it's really important to understand that because a lot of people don't realize and they think, okay, what do you mean by cost? How is that going to cost me more? Or they assume higher rates or higher fees. It really just depends on the structure of your financing, what's going to make the most sense for you um, at the end of the day. And so the biggest thing I think to take away from this is, yes, the lower credit scores, as you can see here, got less, exp or less expensive, but most likely people in that bracket where you see the most green is probably not going to take advantage of it anyways. And yes, there is some higher adjustments for people that have lower or higher credit scores, but it is for people that are putting less down. Um, so it's not, and a quarter point means, you know, again, not a quarter point higher in rate. It means a quarter point adjustment to the cost, which can be, you know, maybe a little bit higher rates or just paying a little bit more in fees, depending on what that price adjustment is here. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at this information. Know that it's not as big of a thing as they're portraying it to be homes and pricing. I mean, it's a long-term investment strategy. And also know that right now, you know, depending on what your overall focus is, you're probably going to be taking a little bit higher rate, less cost, because you're probably going to refinance in the next one to two years, anyhow, when rates come down. 
So if you're smart and you're working with the right mortgage planners, such as myself, we're making sure that we look at all these things that cost you the less at the end of the day. So if you'd like to look at a free consultation or just want to talk about the market more to understand this, please reach out. I'd love to go over the information with you. You can reach me at kristenloans.com. All my information on there, that's K-R-I-S-T-I-N-L-O-A-N-S.com. And I hope this has been insightful for you to understand that there's nothing to really be too concerned about um, as lending and real estate and finances in general investment, especially everything going on right now, it's always going to have changes. It's just making sure you have the right information so that you can navigate it and make the best decisions for you and your family.